passive income. I really believe I'm obsessed. It is not just on, on camera. I am obsessed and I have been obsessed with passive income, with residual income, with reoccurring money ever since the first time I ever saw it. It just made sense. Like I can make money even when I'm off playing and enjoying my life or if I'm not working or when I'm sleeping or when I'm on vacation, the money's going to keep coming. Okay. That's a concept that I fell in love with the second that I saw it. I've been obsessed with it ever since. And then I learned about merchant services and it was just the cherry on top of, you know, passive income because anybody can do this. We got people from all over the United States. I'm not going to ask everyone's age on the chat box, but I know we had some older folks. We've got some younger folks. We got people that probably got master's degree in college. We have high school dropouts. We have everything, a whole plethora of rage, age, gender, education, financial background on this call. And each and every one of us, myself included, to the newest person on here, can take this industry, build passive income from your own efforts, and change your freaking life, okay? That's why I start my meetings with where will residual income take you? Another way you can say this is where will merchant sales take you? Because if you learn how to successfully Build a merchant sales business. You will change your life. You will have passive income. It's not bias. It is literally math. Results multiplied by time equals financial freedom in this industry. So in this meeting, let's go over some things. I want to help you guys kick off your week. It is time to get serious. We're rolling into the summer. We don't have all the snow and uh, crazy storms going on in some of these states that you guys are in, which in the winter can you know, put a little uh, a little roadblock for some of you guys. Storms come in, it gets you off the road. You can't go to work for three, four days. The thing I love about summer is everybody, all 50 states, it's game time. Processing volumes go up, which means business owners need us more. They're running more volume, which means they can save more money because if they're not on dual pricing or cash discounting or surcharging already, summer comes and they're going to pay a lot more money. Right now is the time for them to get on board with you because they're going to save and they have the most to gain as of right now. So let's give you guys some tips here. Like we talked about last week, we're going to talk about every single week. We are in the fintech industry. Okay. When I got into this roughly 15 years ago, we were just merchant services. We had a little credit card terminal and it swiped people's cards. That's what it did, right? We were all about merchant services. It was all about money. Obviously service, customer service has always been there. But at the end of the day, it was about helping a business run credit cards and how much were they going to pay to do that? That's it. That's all it was about. Fintech is what we are now. We are in the fintech industry, which means financial, which is the rates they pay. We move their money around. How much are they going to pay to do it? But there's also the tech side of it now, right? The technologies, the smart terminals. How can our systems make a business's life easier? What kind of things can we automate? and do via softwares along with getting rid of the bill that they pay. And we do that with technology, right? Nowadays, the terminals can do a lot more than simply run cards if they wanna take advantage of that stuff. That's what FinTech means, financial technology. It's important to acknowledge that you're in FinTech, not just Fin, because if you're only out there selling on money, if all you have to do is talk about money, you're not going to build a very secure book of business. And if you only sell on money, then people will leave you for the next company that comes along talking about money as well. So you want to sell on fintech, not just the money side of it. Okay. So rule or not rule, quick tip. Number one that I have for you, very important. It's one of the things that we're so excited about at Easy Pay. We have something really unique here. It's our pitch book. We have a story. Okay that helps us close a ton of accounts, okay? There's a phrase, facts tell, stories sell. When you go into a business and you just tell them a bunch of facts, like, hey, what's going on? My name's Joe. I work at this company called Easy Pay. Here's why Easy Pay is so awesome. We get rid of your bill. Our customer service is this. When you call, I answer my phone. When you do this, I'm gonna be there for you. When you need somebody and you just start labeling all these facts, and you start talking about all these acclimates and all these things about your company and tell them all these facts about the industry. Okay, facts tell. You're just talking, talk, 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 talk. 
stories get people to engage. They make those facts more logical. They make the facts so people can relate with them, that it makes sense, and they will buy from you, okay? So one of the things that I've almost always, I probably, the pitch book, I've been using the pitch book probably 12 years, 11 or 12 years out of almost 15, okay? And the pitch book is amazing because of this quick tip I'm giving you right here. It's a story. It is literally a story that I can go through from page one to the end. I right here in Florida, you up in North Dakota and Maine and Tennessee and all the different places you are, we can all tell a story that gets people to engage, that leads you all the way to more closes. I've been using this for years. I've used it in all lower 48 states. I've signed accounts in every lower 48 states. I make residual income in every of the lower 48 states because of this book. Okay, this is a magical book from my perspective, and it's worked. And every time the industry grows and evolves and changes, like when we went from um, uh, tiered pricing to interchange pricing, right? You update the book to affect what's going on in the industry. And then it went to EMV when they started putting the chips in cards. Okay, so we tweaked the book to adjust to that next wave in the industry. Then cash discounting came out. Obviously, we adjusted the book to cash discounting. And now, we're really getting past the cash discount stage. We're going into more dual pricing, but more importantly, technologies and softwares and the technology side of fintech. So obviously we have adjusted the book as we go here. So when we talk about facts, tell, story, sell, let me change my screen here. I wanna share this with you. I wanna share how this story works, okay? now. As before I do this, I want to point out what we are not about at Easy Pay is this is the only way to do this. Okay. This is not the only way. This is not the only story. It's not like if you don't do it just like this, then you're doing it wrong. That is not what we're saying. That's not the case. Okay. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat, there's a lot of different personalities out there. If you can walk in with nothing and just, you know, build relationships, people like you and they sign up because, you know, people buy because they like you and they trust you and it's working for you, do what works for you, okay? This book works for me. I've signed thousands of merchant accounts with it. It has helped a lot of people become financially free at a fast pace because if you learn how to get this down, it has worked for many, many, many people. But I'm just making a disclaimer. It's not like my way or the highway. Okay, if you don't have this book or if you're not using the book and you're having success, keep doing what you're doing. But in this, you will pick up on a couple of things because facts tell, stories sell. So here's the story. If I walk into somebody's business, I'm not just coming in and telling them all about me and my company and let's get rid of your bill. There's more to it than that. Okay, at that point, guys, you can see how from beginning to end, this has been a story. I'm not just blabbering to him. And obviously in a real pitch, he's going to ask me some questions. He's going to have some objections. I'm going to have some rebuttals. But with this book, we have all the different pages set up. So as rebuttals come up, if I'm in the middle of my pitch, he says, yeah, I'm already doing that. Then I'm just going to skip over a couple pages and I'm going to go to the part of the story that's relevant. And as I'm talking to him, I'm giving him visuals. Because if you just go into businesses and talk and talk and talk, imagine if I just did the whole thing I've done these last 22 minutes with just the screen on me and I wasn't showing you this book, you would be lost. You would lose interest. You would start focusing on other things. You'd start thinking about other things. But by having you engaged, and changing the page and giving you information that matches the words out of my mouth, it keeps you engaged. This is intentional. And it's how it works out in the field as well. So facts tell, story sell. That is quick tip number one, just the first tip for you. Let me get back over to this. Facts tell, story sell. There's your proof right there. It just worked on you guys, okay? Tell stories out in the field. Don't just run around telling facts. So today we have a really, really important call. So I want everybody on here to really be a student this week, because in order for you to do 
the book that I just did in order for you to overcome the objections that they're going to have. When somebody says, well, hey, is this legal? Right. I can break that down for you. I'm not going to on this call right now just because we got a lot to cover. But you need to understand how this stuff works so that out there in the real world, what you really are is you're just educating people. You're educating them. Hey, you know, you've got this pain going on over here. What's your pain? It's, it's inflation. It's these credit card fees. Your profits are down. That's your pain. But I'm here to let you know and just educate you that, you know, there was a law that was passed that can actually help you, right? And here's how it works. And in order to educate them past that right there, You've got to understand this stuff yourself, okay? Don't wait until you fully understand to get started, but learn as you go, okay? So starting today, I want everyone, please be a student this week. Today, you should be on this webinar at four o'clock where they're really going to break down dual pricing. What is it? What is it not? The legality behind it. What does the signage look like? What is it that Visa MasterCard doesn't want to see? What is it that makes a business non-compliant and why is dual pricing compliant. They're going to break all this stuff down for you. I didn't get into anything. Everything you just saw was not even the tip of the iceberg. Okay. You need to get on a webinar that specifically covers that. And it's today at four o'clock. You'll get an email. You'll get a text reminder as well. Um, last week, I know we got a bunch of emails. The email went out late. The reminder was set late. So I apologize about last week. This week it's correct. Everybody be on this call. You need to understand what dual pricing is, not just you know, for your own sake, but for your merchant's sake so that you can go out there and educate. That's the trick, guys. You're helping people by educating them. If you are there to help them and they know that you legitimately, sincerely want to help them and you can educate them and be the professional, if they like you and they trust you, you mix all that stuff together, they're going to do business with you. Okay. So be a professional, know what the heck you're doing out there. Quick tip number two, smart terminals, AKA uh, pay anywhere versus point of sales, okay? We have smart terminals like we showed you and the software that we use for this is called pay anywhere. It can do a lot of cool stuff. It can do basic inventory. It can help with uh, employee management, time clock, things like that. It is not a full-blown robust point of sale. We're not gonna go set up a restaurant that needs three kitchen printers, a bar printer, a, a kitchen display screen and stuff like that on pay anywhere. So quick tip number two is simply promote the technologies that we have. Okay. Promote smart terminals, promote how this can help the average business that just has a, a plain Jane credit card terminal. I like asking people, what is your machine doing for you over there? Other than taking payments. Okay. If they just have an old credit card terminal, that's just taking payments. And it's a type of business that could use some help and technologies and systems. That's a huge selling point. That's the tech part of FinTech. Okay, so you got to be aware of that stuff. But the point of this slide is know the difference between a smart terminal, which has some basic softwares that'll help them versus a point of sale, which is a big, robust system. Think about an Olive Garden, a, a Red Lobster. You go in there, they've got six or seven different stations, right? If a waitress uh, rings up a, a beer, that beer is going to go to a specific printer at the bar, and an appetizer is going to go to a specific printer in the app section. And uh, a steak is going to, right? There's different sections in the restaurant. It's very coordinated. It's very intentional. Different orders are going different places. There's a lot of moving place uh, pieces. Somebody wants a spaghetti with extra marinara and, and sub the meatballs for grilled chicken or something like that, right? You're getting complex. That's what full-blown point of sales are for. Now, the good news about point of sales is We've got like 15 of them, okay? We've got 15 point of sales. You don't have to understand all the ins and outs of the point of sales because we have an entire team that knows all of them and will demo them for you. If you run into a situation where somebody is beyond a terminal, even a smart terminal, and they want a really complex system, and maybe they want online ordering and they want it to be with Uber Eats and Grubhub and and all of those, and they have just all this cool stuff that they need, and they're asking you questions like, do you have a system that this, this, and that? Yes, we do. Okay, we have an entire demo, uh, point of sale demo team. My job, if this is what you're interested in, isn't to go over every feature of it. My job at this point 
is to just find out what exactly you want your system to do. What are the features that you're looking for? And if they already have a point of sale, you can ask them, what features do you wish your system had right now that it currently does not? Okay, so once you get into the point of sale world, you're just an information gatherer. What are the features? What are the things that you want your system to do? And you take all those notes and you're going to connect with your sales director and you're going to submit the lead. And then our point of sale team will pair that information of what they need. They'll pair what their needs to the correct point of sale system. And then we'll get on a Zoom call and we'll actually demo it for them, right? And those are going to be for the really big, robust, higher volume, more sophisticated accounts. But for those of you that are just getting on with EasyPay, um, I know a couple of you I invited to even just come check us out because you're you're considering maybe you have a call scheduled with us today and I invited you on here. We have that level of sophistication and technology or we can just go and bang doors and get the average mom and pop shops and get them some cool software here. Either way, we're going to give them great service. They're going to get rid of their bill and they're going to upgrade their technology. Okay. And in the end, you're going to build a business, make a commission and make a residual income. That's what we're doing here. Okay. That's what easy pay is. So quick tip number two, know the difference between pay anywhere, AKA smart terminals versus full blown point of sales. So to learn more about the differences, tomorrow we have a webinar. Okay. You need to be on tomorrow's again, please this week, put on your student cap so that you can be a teacher in the field. In order to be a teacher in the field, you need to be a student here with us. Okay, so tomorrow, four o'clock Eastern time, we will have a webinar that goes over specifically the different devices. And I'll tell you right now with Pay Anywhere, we have a lot of really cool devices. This is the most basic one. Well, actually, your phone. Okay, they can do it on a phone. This is going to be the most basic, but even their phone, they can turn into a mini technology device that runs cards. To A920s, to if you want something to go search, go search PAX E600, PAX E700. Those are a couple really cool devices. You know what? I'm going to show you. PAX E600. Just make this easy. I'll do, do the work for you right here, okay? It's a really cool handheld device. And I guess the Pay Anywhere software, it's got the customer-facing screen, so when somebody rings up a cell, it'll tell them right here, cash price, regular price. The customer right there gets to determine, do they want the discounted cash price or do they want to pay the regular posted price? It does it right there on the screen for them. They can put a little menu, does all sorts of cool stuff. Again, I don't want to get into it because that's what tomorrow's webinar is for, but I do want you to see the kind of hardware that we have. Tax E700. This thing looks like a point of sale, okay? This is one of the reasons why I'm running this quick tip. This thing is very cool. It can do a lot, which you're going to find out more about on tomorrow's meeting, but it is not a full-scale Olive Garden Red Lobster point of sale, like in-depth like that. It is awesome. It does have a lot of features. It's a micro point of sale. But be on tomorrow's call to get all the, de all the details. And folks, with these devices right here that I'm showing you, they're free. We offer these for free without that merchant having to buy anything and without them having to get locked into a contract. Okay, so when you think about easy pay and like if you're checking us out, like, oh, what's easy pay got going on? What makes them different? Guys, we've got the technologies. We've got the service. We've got the dual pricing. We've got the support for you. We've got the training. We've got the live webinars. We've got so much stuff. And at the end of the day, you can go out there and give it away and build a business that pays you residual income. It's unbelievable. This happened last week on this exact same slide. For some reason, it gets stuck there on that one slide. That's weird. All right. So we've talked about four o'clock today. We've got a dual pricing webinar. Everyone be on that. You'll get a text. You'll get an email. Tomorrow, 4 p.m., you'll be on that webinar. It's about pay anywhere, the ter uh, terminals and the technologies and the catalog of actual hardware that you have available to offer for free. Wednesday. I want everybody between now and Wednesday to go out there, go to work, go get a deal or two, go get rejected, go get the objections, go find out what you understand, what you don't understand. Go find out what is easy for you to answer. Go find out what you're caught up on, what you don't understand. And I want you to bring all of that to Wednesday's meeting where we actually get on and it is an open meeting and we will engage with one another. 
We will practice pitch with one another. You bring the things that you need help with to this meeting midweek so that we can start Wednesday with momentum from Monday and Tuesday. And we start off Wednesday filling in these little holes that you find in your boat. But guys, if you don't get your boat on the water, if you don't go to work, then you won't know where the holes are. You have to go to work today and tomorrow, full effort, whether you know what you're doing or not, so that you can find out what you don't know and we can help you on Wednesday. I'm gonna help you sharpen your iron Wednesday. This is 10 a.m. so we can get your day started. Folks, that's the lessons that I have for you. And then from here, I just wanna, I just wanna talk to everybody about being hungry. Okay, so being hungry, I, I think we go through different phases. I, I know I have. And one of the things that Michael Jordan, I didn't have this, but I wrote it down when I was watching that Michael Jordan video. Is like, he said, every time you win, it takes a little bit of that hunger from you, right? That hunger. Once you win that first championship and that second championship and that third championship. So for those on here that have been winning and that you have residual income, I want you to remember what it was like if you've lost this to be fucking hungry when you didn't have a penny of residual income. And I'm even talking to myself here because I find myself in this as well. But how is it that people keep going that don't have to keep going? And it's they have to find a way to to hold on to that hunger and to keep going. It's like when you were new in the business and, you know, this dream of the outcome was so appealing, but you didn't have it yet. So in between, you're, you're hungry, you're willing to go do all the work, but how do you hold that once you've accomplished some of the things that you want to accomplish? And for those of you that haven't accomplished that, think back to something in your life that you did accomplish. Think back to when it was just an idea and you knew something that you wanted. And right now it's just an idea, which is where a lot of you are. How do you get from point A to point B? It's not always just hard work. Hard work isn't enough. You have to be hungry. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes. You got to be willing to stay up late. You got to turn the TV off. You might have to sacrifice some time with family. I know I did. It's When you're hungry, right, you have a whatever it takes attitude. It doesn't matter how many hours you work that week. It doesn't matter how much you get rejected that day. You're hungry for the result. All you look at is the result and the progress that you make. And you understand the compound effect. It's the small things. So if you're looking, let me pull this over here. It's, it's really simple stuff. It's not complicated. You've got something that you're willing to do. Let's say, let's get off of, let's get off work for a second. Because you can apply this to anything. You want to be, you want to be fit. I want to be fit. I want to be healthy, okay? You think that this is, this is what you're going for. I'm going to be fit. I'm going to be healthy. So in the chat box, if you want to be fit, if you want to be healthy, what are the things that you would do if you want to be fit and you want to be healthy? Let's get this chat box going. I'm not going to be going too much longer, but at this point, make sure you guys are engaged here. If you want to be fit and you want to be healthy, what are the things that you're going to do in your life? You're going to go to the gym. What else are you going to do? Eat right. Diet, right? You're going to eat right. Change eating habits. Yep, eat right. Change your eating. Consistent. This is going to kind of go on another list. Okay, so when I think about how do you stay hungry? How do you stay hungry? Let's say, let's say you reach this right here. Let's say you become fit. Let's say you become healthy. How the hell do you stay hungry enough to keep doing this? Because this is this is hard, right? This is discipline. You go to the gym, you get back on a late flight, and you're so disciplined that you still go to the gym. Even on vacation in the summer, you're road tripping. Instead of going to McDonald's, you go somewhere and you go to Subway and you eat a salad instead, right? You eat right on a vacation when you're out on a road trip and you stay consistent doing that. How do you stay 
hungry is my question. And I was thinking a lot about this between last night and tonight for myself, to be honest. Because it's really easy to get caught up. You get comfortable. You get the things that you wanted 10 years ago or a year ago and you hit your goals. How do you keep fucking going? Okay, and I really believe you have to have an event. You have to have something. This is what works for me, okay? I always have something that I'm going for, okay? Being fit and healthy is just like, that's, that's too freaking broad, okay? So if I want to be fit and healthy, maybe, maybe 4th of July. July 4th, every year we have a barbecue, we go to the beach, we have a bunch of people from the church that get together, and I want to be fit. I want to look good. I want to look sexy at this event, okay? It might be January. It might be February. It might be March, okay? Just saying I want to be fit and healthy, I could reach that in March and then lose it. But if I have an event, I can always keep going. For me, this is a big one. Spartan racing, okay? I love Spartan racing, ultra marathon, stuff like that. Major hiking events. Okay, I'm doing this hike this summer, like mind blowing. As I'm interlocking Switzerland. You go up these ridge lines. That it's like the most dangerous hike in the world. There's literally cliffs on both sides. You got two and a half feet in some spots. It's the coolest fucking hike. It is so hard. You're going up ridges, down ridges, up ridges, down ridges. Got to be physically fit, right? So maybe this is a, a vacation, but... The reason why Spartan racing and having destinations, I always, always, always have them in front of me is, is for this right here. It keeps me doing this. And if I keep doing the small things right, then the big things take care of their self. And if I always have things like this going on, then now I'm just living a badass life because I've always got cool things that are going on. But these are the things that actually keep that fucking hunger going because being fit's not enough if I'm already fit. I've got to have more. Let's do one more. You could do this with anything. You could go to relationships. We could start over here, a healthy relationship. But what's on the back side of that healthy relationship? What exactly is it that we're doing it for that's going to keep us hungry? Okay, I did one right here. So let's talk about, you know, we're all here. We all think we're here when we first start for passive income. So it's what we all think we're here for. We all want passive income. That's going to be so cool to be able to make money, even when I'm on vacation and sleeping and working or not working. I said it right at the beginning. As soon as I saw merchant services or as soon as I saw residual income, I had to have it. It just made sense. Okay, so what are the things that we can do in merchant sales to get residual income? Merchant sales, just kind of speed this up. Go to work. Go to webinars, get educated. We play the numbers game. We communicate. Okay, and there's a whole lot of lists over here um, for, for me running a company. We got to fucking recruit heavy. We got to have less errors. We got to be, you know, we can't be missing calls from sales reps. We have to maximize the amount of leads that are coming into our business. Okay, we don't take the weekend to dick around if we're not getting the results that we want because we have to do these things right to grow the path, to grow the passive income. Okay, but what do you do when you accomplish this? How do we stay hungry? What is it that gives people that superpower that even when they look like they have it all, they just keep going? There's gotta be events. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more on the back end of this. This is your dream life when it comes to residuals. What will your freaking dream life look like? And these things are all intercoordinated with each other. Let's see, I put a little list here. Health, relationships, contributions, health, relationships, contribution. In contribution, I'm going to put church. 
contribution to the world, to your church, investments. It is too easy once you've accomplished what you want to get fucking lazy. If you've already accomplished what you wanted years ago, wake up, stay hungry. There's more on the back end, okay? Passive income, like what does passive income have to do with health? Everything. You have time freedom when you have passive income. So once you have massive passive income, you can give yourself that time every single day and go to the gym. And go to gym any time of the day that I freaking want. It's a choice. Relationships. Do you know what passive income does for your relationships? You think you're ever going to miss a kid's, you know, uh, recital? A kid's baseball game, playoff games, the things that you can do with your family? Where are you going to take your wife? You take some romantic vacations. You work on your relationship. I could take my wife to lunch seven days, seven days a week, not worry about what we eat, not worry about the schedule, not worry about if a, if a deal comes in because I this time with my wife is more important, okay? Because of passive income. How much can you contribute to your church? You know, I don't, I, I definitely, I'm not going to quote the Bible because I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to say something, you know, I don't mean to say, but I remember a story in the Bible. Not, again, I don't want to quote it exactly. But when Jesus talks about, you know, the, the lady that didn't have anything and gave, right? She gave less, but she gave everything she had or what she gave was significantly more valuable to her because of how much she had versus the person that gave a lot, but it was a small percentage of what they had. But I'm just kind of doing this off the top of my head. But one thing it doesn't talk about is, well, what if that lady kept getting that amount that she gave over and over and over again? Like, what if you had the residuals to where the amount you contributed kept coming back so you could keep giving it? And it wasn't like a one-time thing, right? And that could be church, that can be contribution, but you try to make you have passive income. Come on, your contribution is going to go up. And then investments, obviously. We all want our cash flow to grow. We all want our money to grow as inflation. If inflation hit hyperinflation, Hopefully you have investments that would help offset that and help keep up with it. My whole point here, folks, is we got to stay hungry, okay? Just being like, I'm here because I want to make residual income. I'm going to do this because I'm going to make residual income. Well, what are you going to do beyond that? What are you going to do once you have the residual income? If you're already fit right now, what are you doing to make sure that you maintain going to the gym? And for me, having an event, having a date, having something, a moment that is measurable that I'm going to be at with a person for a specific thing for me has always kept me extremely, extremely hungry. That's how I keep going because it's always the next thing. And as soon as I cross the finish line, I'm training for the next one instead of sitting idle, instead of being comfortable. Same thing. The one merchant account comes in, we're on to the next one. We're on to the next one. Why? Because we're building this freaking awesome life. There are so many different events. If I actually sat and thought about breaking this down, like in my head, in my world, you're going to have your own. I can't do this lesson on you. I have to share mine. If I broke it down, there is so many of these little action, result, real events that motivates it. Action, result, real event that motivates it. And with three kids and a business and a desire to travel the world and be a patriot and be a contributor to God, there's so many different moving pieces. And this is the common denominator that has allowed us in our family to actually do them. So I hope that you're freaking hungry, guys. Get out there. Go learn. Go get educated. Keep plugging in. And I told you I had something for you at the end here. So for those of you that are on here right now, know your why, vision board, all sorts of stuff in here, fasting, mindset. We have an updated, we've added some updated pages, okay? It's got the pay anywhere. It's got the terminals. It's got those slides about what EDGE program is and the sample signage and the secret shoppers and, and all those things that I showed you. There's updated pages, okay? These books, most of you guys on here have paid for. Obviously, those of you that have paid for it, you're automatically getting the pages. You just have to communicate with us and let us know that you need them. Stay hungry, guys. Go grow your business. Change your life with easy pain and merchant sales. See you at the top. Have a good one.